and good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday to y'all. Uh, this is the portion of the show where we sit back and relax and wait for the clock on the wall to finish striking noon. And we let YouTube get their collective acts together and start sending out notifications that we're going live. We let folks find those notifications. We kind of sit around and uh, kind of chill out, relax, and get ready for the clock on the wall to strike 12. And when that happens, I come over here, reach for the magic button, click it, and say, Hey, y'all, happy Sunday. Hope everybody's doing well today. Hope uh, you've been able to get out and get a little bit of shop time and uh, give her a good go. So, wow, it is a typical cold, gray, dreary day here in Southern Oregon. We had, oh boy, have we had rain. <laughs> it's funny because it's not a hard rain. It's just a constant drizzle. So it may only be oh, eight inches of rain so far this year. It's just taken all flipping month to do it. So, oh, well, enough of my problems. Life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. So this morning, uh, I'll get into your questions in just a few minutes. And I wanted to welcome everybody. There uh, are quite a few questions already on the uh, on the video I put out this morning and that was when it comes to exporting clip art from the database making modifications to that clip art and then exporting as further clip art and uh, one of the questions I got was, can you export that as an STL file? Yes, you can. You can export it as an STL file. Any 3D model you create in Aspire, you can export as an STL file. The thing is, if you're not going to be using it in another program, there really is no need. If you're just going to be using it in Aspire, then saving it as a 3D clip file and putting it into a custom clip art folder keeps it right there handy. You no longer have to search. You don't have to import. You don't have to do any of the conversions that you would have to do with an STL file. Now, again, this is Aspire only. VCarve is not and never was meant to be a 3D modeling program. So you can't create a 3D model and you can't um, convert it to the V3M format that VCarve uses. Also, it's important to note that the 3D clip files that Aspire creates cannot be imported or opened in VCarve. So they're Aspire only files. So with, with that behind us, um, you can export an STL file if you choose to do so. And if you work in another program like uh, uh, Fusion 360 um, and you want to design something and uh, in Aspire and export it uh, as an STL and bring it into Fusion for use on a, like a 3D printer or something like that, you sure can. You can do it that way if you want. But if you're just simply going to be using it in Aspire itself, there's really, there's really no sense in exporting it as an STL. But having said that, if you plan on getting in the business of creating and selling models, then that is another way to go. But I would give it serious thought about uh, if you're going to create models to sell, I would put some serious thought into creating the, uh, the models and exporting them into STL as well as 3D clip files because folks with Aspire will appreciate that. So, 
All right. Uh, let's see. Let's. Uh, I want to. I do want to get back into Aspire here real quick and uh, show a couple things. So let me go ahead and do a quick screen share here and make sure that I am sharing my screen. Um, I all Peleg asked directly uh, if I couldn't when I went down the list and was deleting files here one by one, if I couldn't just go ahead and uh, select several by holding down control and just going down the list and then deleting all of these at one time. Yes, you certainly can. You just need to make sure that the, uh, that the model is completely ungrouped. Let me control Z to undo that and bring those back. Uh, just as a little aside here, I turned on that middle dome again, that middle button, and that actually kind of looks pretty cool. It's got a funny little weird line right there that would have to be getting rid of, but that actually kind of looks a little cool. Oh well, uh, just apropos of absolutely nothing whatsoever. Uh, yes, you can do multiple deletes. Um, something that I do when I'm making videos on a subject like this is I, I tend to try to reinforce the basic use of tools and I need to stop doing that because we are at a point where I'm, I, I'm not really doing basic videos anymore and I haven't been for quite some time. So, uh, I go. I went down the list and I deleted them one by one just to reinforce the point that you can just select something and hit delete on the keyboard and delete it. Well, I no longer need to do that. So, another question that I got in the comments on the video was when I first started working with the model, I ungrouped the model but when I finished this model I did not regroup them is there a benefit to regrouping them and yes the benefit you can certainly do that and what you do is you select the entire level right click eh, no you don't okay I take that back you would start with number one and come down and select all of them, right click and group. And that ring group is now, all of those separate components are grouped. So you can't accidentally delete one. And that's the main advantage. You can't accidentally go in and select one and try to delete it or modify it or what have you. You can still turn something off and turn it back on, but it can't be removed or edited without ungrouping. So there is a benefit, but if you're going to be using this model as is, for example, you don't really need to regroup it or ungroup it. And if you're only using this model and you're not going to be doing anything else over in the component tree, it's entirely up to you. You, you can regroup it. You don't have to. So, hope that, uh, I hope that answered those two questions. Now, let me get back over here to y'all, to your questions now, as we're going. Um, let's see. Uh, let me go back up here towards the top because there were a few questions up here. Um, yes, it was Petra who asked about uh, exporting as STLs. So, uh, let's see. Let me come down here. Oh, and there was a little bit of teasing um, about uh, suicidal at times and me suggesting a name change. I think the name is funny. Uh, it's just it kind of worrying, but, you know, it, it, you use whatever name you want. <laughs> There were also some questions about uh, the Gerbil um, controller software and uh, post-processor. I know absolutely nothing about it, so I'm afraid I'm going to be of absolutely no help. 
So, sorry. Ah, uh, let's see here. Get back down to some questions here. Um, my gosh. Does anybody have any questions about today's video before I uh, branch off into something else? Let's see. Um, I know you don't want to sit here and listen. Okay, Lewis Denton asks, is 3D design restricted to Aspire? There are other 3D design programs out there, but if you mean within the Vectric family, yes. It, uh, 3D, model, 3D modeling is restricted to Aspire. There are a few basic edits you can make in uh, VCarve, but that's more or less restricted to scaling the size and the uh, depth of the model. But as far as creating a model in VCarve, you're pretty much limited to importing a model or using something like the molding toolpath. And that will let you do some, the molding toolpath will let you do some basic 3D modeling but it's not really 3D modeling in that you can export a model from that. Excuse me, I have a sneeze coming on. <laughs> Excuse me. Wow, that hurts. Uh, for instance, if you watched my video on creating the fretboard with the... Uh, molding toolpath, I demonstrated that I could not project a the fret marks down onto the fretboard because it's not considered a 3D model by the software. So if you're thinking about getting into uh, 3D modeling, then a step up to Aspire is recommended. So because that's about the only way you're going to do it, unless you go off to one of the other um, 3D modeling programs, which is basically parametric 3D modeling like Fusion 360 or SolidWorks or something of that nature. Uh, there are others, Blender, um, oh boy, CarveCo. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different uh, 3D modeling programs out there. ZBrush. So, okay, let's see. Um, here we go cruising down the list to see if we can find it. David Pingle says, hi, uh, from Wisconsin. You're getting a lot of press as a resource for VCarve help on the Onefinity forum. I've, I, I've noticed that. Um, I joined the Onefinity forum a couple of days ago, um, as the, as suggested by, uh, the owner of one of the groups that I moderate or help moderate. And uh, I was kind of surprised to see my name keep popping up. But uh, I, I'm very new. I think I've liked a couple of posts, but I don't own a Onefinity. So I kind of keep it, uh, I kind of hold myself in check because I don't know the machine. I've never seen one up close and personal. So it's not my place to step in and just start talking about them. So, uh, but I have, I have seen it and it kind of surprised me and, Thanks, David. I appreciate it. <laughs> Let's see. KP says he made his first live or her first live. I'm not sure which. Welcome aboard. Uh, let's see here. KP says I have a crazy question. Is there a CNC for dummies that are just starting out? There may be, but that whole XXX for dummies thing is copywritten and trademarked. So... Um, even if there was, unless they were an author going through that publisher, you wouldn't be able to use it. Um, as far as basic CNC, um, I will put a link to a playlist I have on my channel that is CNC for the absolute beginner. And then there currently is right now a link in the description of this video to my Vectric for the absolute beginner and V-carving for the absolute beginner. 
uh, playlist. Those are already both down there. I will add C and C for beginners link down below. Um, it'll kind of get, it'll be pretty basic and um, get into initial steps and what have you. So um, as far as a, a total breakdown, you know what, I'll go ahead and do it. I wrote an article a couple years back on my website and uh, called uh, the CNC process for the absolute beginner. I think you probably already know that stuff, but I'll go ahead and throw it out there. I'll put a link to that in the uh, description of this video after we get done live here. Uh, I see you said I watched all of your videos and guess what? I still don't get it except for the bits. I get the bits. Well, um, answers can be varied and can be very difficult to give you. I, it, it's hard to give concrete answers simply because there are so many different machines out there, so many different machine manufacturers out there. Um, so when you start talking about jogging uh, the axis, let's say you want to move your x-axis back and forth, I know what I have to do with my system in Mach 3. But I have no idea what Axiom does, what Shape, Shape Oko does, or any other control system or control software. I, I, I've only used Mach 3. So that's the only thing I can kind of give an answer to. Uh, let's see. Dean Howard, Canada here. Hey, Dean, did you get your coffee mug? It, uh, I, I know it shipped quite a while ago. But uh, it should have got across the border. Uh, I hope that answers your question there, KP. Uh, let's see. Patriots and Truth Seekers, is there a way to get a hold of you offline? Yes, through the Contact Us form on my website. There is a link in the description box below. Uh, Matt Haas, all things YouTube in the house. How you doing? How you doing? Let's see. Uh, okay, sometimes I make, uh, this is suicidal at all times. Sometimes I make a 3D objects, object and move it to the top zero gap. But it seems to start ten thousandths in rather than zero, zero, zero. Um, you know, that could be anything. Uh, I always check the mechanical first. Always check the mechanical first. And, uh basically where you're touching off your zero, I don't know that it'd be off by ten thousandths, but um, yeah, you know, I, that could be anything from, wow, it could be any number of things. If it's consistent, if that always happens, then you might want to look into accounting for that ten thousandths. I mean, it could be anything from, I hate to think it would be backlash, but it could be anything from a little bit of backlash to um, a, a slightly loose mount, a slightly loose collet. Uh, but if it's consistent, you know, um, if it's consistent... There's something going on inside there uh, that's well outside of the tolerance of uh, v carve because I've, I've yet to have that issue. So, uh, let's see. See me and others. What, is, what bit is best for drilling screw holes in MDF and how? Use a drilling tool path with an upcut spiral bit. And that is definitely important, an upcut spiral bit. Do not attempt to drill with a downcut spiral bit. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Mike Smith wants to know, does VCarve Pro have models of several parts? S um, it, it's, the, it comes with a lot of 3D clip art. And Vectric's sister company, Design and Make, has several other 
uh, clip art packages available for purchase. So what you mean by several parts, um, I'm not really sure where to go with that. Now, I have Aspire, so I know it comes with more models than VCarve does, but so I'm not exactly certain what all models it, com uh, it comes with. But, uh, yeah, there are quite a few uh, models to choose from. Dean Howard wants to know, how do you, you approach your wife about purchasing Aspire? What is your secret? Oh, no. Don't you try to draw me into that. No way. Not going to do it? Nope. You're on your own. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, suicidal at all times wants to know what are you connecting to your CNC with? USB to Aspire CNC controller or one or the other? Okay, I run a I run a Xylotex drive box which is no longer available, but I run it straight through. I'm old school, even in CNC. I run it straight through the parallel port out of the drive box through a breakout board so I can hook up my touch plate and out of that breakout board straight into the parallel port on the computer. I run Mach 3. I'm using an old Dell PC running Windows XP. I told my friends and family when I first got into CNC that I was looking for an old computer that would run the uh, Mach 3 software. So if they had an old Windows XP computer hiding in a closet or tucked under the bed, let me know and I'll check it out. And maybe I'll buy it. That first week I had four given to me for free and they're still coming. I currently have, I can reach out in touch right now. One, two, three, four, five of them with as backups. So if that computer dies on me today, I can walk in here, grab one of these, and replace it. And they all have my Mach 3 backup loaded on it and ready to go. So um, I use Mach 3 because at the time, it was before Mach 4 came out. At the time, it was a cheap, trouble-free alternative. And I got to tell you, it's a set-it-and-forget-it type of a system. Once I got it set up, I haven't had to get into, I haven't had to get under the hood and change anything. So there is a process. Uh, it does require a lot of steps to get it set up. But once it's set up, you know, back it up. I back it up onto a thumb drive. I have a thumb drive put in my fireproof box with my latest Mach 3 backup on it. And, you know, should I lose it? It's right there. So I don't have a USB motion controller. I don't have any of that. I'm sticking with the old school because it works and I don't have problems. So let's see. Uh, David Pingle wants to know, is the create job object available only in VCAR Pro and Aspire? Uh, if you mean create create job object let me uh, i don't understand let me i are you talking about job setup uh create a new file something like that or am i m missing something um okay oh create job sheet maybe if that's what you mean uh, if you're talking about create job sheet, yes, that's only available in the pro versions. It's not available in the desktop versions. So, uh, let's see. Let me get back in here. Boom, 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 boom. Let me come back up here and see. I'm trying to scroll down here. Okay, I'm trying to get caught up here. Okay, okay. Uh, well, okay, KP says it's Karen. All right, glad to meet you, Karen. Okay, yeah. Um, there isn't really a quote-unquote for dummies out there. And that's one of the things that... Um, 
one of the reasons why I started this entire thing was because I, I've told this story before. There was a gentleman that lived about 90 miles away from me, got so disgusted with his machine and thought it was uh, so far above his head that uh, he basically shoved the thing off of the table into a wheelbarrow and took it outside and dumped it on his burn pile. And I had to just about beg him to get it out of there, put it online, and he sold it for a uh, criminally cheap price. And I thought, you know, uh, none of this is over the heads of anybody. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Seven years ago, I'd never been in the same building with a CNC, and now I've built three of them. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm serious about that. But I can't anticipate every single machine out there because I only have experience with mine. That's why I kind of stick with Vectric software because I'm better with it than I am any other. I mean, I tried Fusion 360 and SolidWorks, and they were just above my head. So I stick with Vectric, and that's about it. So, um, you know. Uh, I will try to help you where, when and where I can, but um, I will link that article to you and that might help you. Basically, the gist of it is, is it's a five-step process and uh, most folks only think about three of those five steps and I'll link it. Um, oh, Steve has already done that. Steve has put the link to that article in the chat, but I will put a link to it in the description of this video. Thank you, Steve. That's why he's the expert. So let's see. Uh, Mark Kramer wants to know, I'm curious what your career was that you retired from. <laughs> I have had many careers. Uh, most recently, what I retired from was real estate agent. Yes, I sold houses. Uh, before that, I was a casino manager. Before that, I was a camp follower while my wife was in the army working in cabinet shops, countertop shops. Before that, uh, I was in the army myself as an aircraft mechanic. So um, I've just been all over the place. So oh, let's see. Norm Peterson says, trying to put a radius on the edge of a board, I have desktop and can do a chamfer, but I don't see how to change it to a radius. You kind of have to sneak up on it, Norm. Um, if you have a the uh, round over bit that you want to use entered in your tool database, just do a profile cut on the vector and make your cut depth that radius. So if you have a, uh, you see, you don't, uh, you don't say, but let's say you have a three eighths inch radius bit, get it entered into the tool database and run your depth of cut at three eighths of an inch, but do a profile tool path on the uh, on the vector. I showed in a couple of my videos, and I I really don't know which ones to be able to call it out and post a link. But I showed in my uh, one of my videos, a couple of my videos, how I did that with a chamfer before Vectric came up with the uh, chamfering tool. And all I did was uh, I drew my, my profile cutout vector and I cut on that same vector with a 90 degree V-bit. Then cut outside the vector with my uh, straight bit to cut out the profile and that left a 45 degree chamfer around it. And you can put a 30 degree chamfer with a 60 degree V-bit, et cetera, et cetera. But sometimes you have to sneak up on things. Having said that, you can also use a uh, molding tool path to create a round over radius if you want to use a uh, like a tapered ball nose or something like that. The secret to that is to make it an open vector. So you draw your perimeter and then just go to your start point, put it into node edit mode, go into your start point, cut the vector, leave it open. If you are using a closed vector, the molding tool path will only cut to the inside. It won't let you change it to the outside. Or maybe I have that backwards. 
I might have that backwards. Maybe it'll only cut to the outside, won't let you cut to the inside. But if you're doing a closed vector for the molding toolpath, cut it at the start point so it's an open vector, and then the program will let you switch. So, okay, let's see. Um, yeah. Um, Warren's Corner says, tell her you want a new truck, keep bugging her, then just settle for a spire. Yeah, well, there, there's a, there's a, well, but I'm not getting into that. Uh, Dave Matthews, parallel port works great for the slow data rates we need for CNC. Yes, it does. Uh, sledgehammer simple and pretty immune to noise. Yes, it is. Plus, the connectors are not fragile, and I just don't have the problems I see other people's having. I really don't. I just don't have the problems. Let's see. Um, and Dean, I would follow uh, Karen's advice there, KP. I would, I would, yeah. Um, let's see. Well... Lewis Denton, Vectric certainly motivates you to upgrade to Aspire. I will if I don't die first. I'm with you in that camp. I went ahead and did it. I'm here to tell you. Um, I'm here to tell you, buy once, cry once. I know it's a huge chunk of change. I know it's a lot of money. Believe me, I did it. I know it's a lot of money. But after six, eight months of using it, you'll wonder how they sold it so cheap. I'm not kidding you. If you are running this as a business, there's a couple of other things to think about here. If you are running a business, the upgrade from VCarve Pro to Aspire is right at $1,300. Now, I'm not trying to be snarky here or be Mr. Know-it-all, but if you can't make back that $1,300 in the first couple of projects, you might want to reevaluate your business plan. Also, if you're running a business, if you're running a business, it's deductible. Tools are not an expense. They're an investment, and Aspire is a tool. Now, having said that, if you don't think you'll use it to its capacity, well, not even to its capacity, if you don't think you'll use it enough to warrant the investment, then don't get it. If your only reason for doing it is to be able to put two models on one single project, have a friend do that for you and Aspire and export that project as an STL file that you can import into vCarve. You know, sometimes it's okay to pay somebody else to do something like that. But if you are planning on getting into 3D modeling or you consistently need to do more than what vCarve will do, Buy once, cry once. Go ahead and bite the bullet. Do it. I'm serious. I did, and I never looked back. And I've not regretted it at all. And Dean, if you tell her that, <laughs> See, it's a good thing you're across the border. <laughs> Honey, Mark said it was okay. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, boy. Okay, Kurt Briegel says, a kind of a throwback question. When doing a profile cut to cut out a shape, and I use a quarter inch end mill. How do you set that up for best cut? Link to a video would be great too. And I'll be happy to watch. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I am a huge fan. Uh, I use quarter inch end mills. That's my, um, that's my go-to is a quarter inch end mill. Um, for those of you using metric um, six millimeter, six point, was it 6.7? Something like that. Um, and if you're using metric, a six millimeter is just fine. That's my go-to. I am a firm believer in using a separate last pass, whether I use tabs or not. I use a separate last pass with an allowance of ten thousandths of an inch. And you have seen in my videos where I've done that a lot. What that does is that let's say it's going to take six passes to cut through. The first five passes will be cut ten thousandths of an inch oversize. 
And that's where you'll get all those little witness marks where the bit plunges down to the next level and cuts around and then plunges down again. By using separate last pass, it'll cut those large oversize. Then on the last pass, it'll lift up and then drop back down ten thousandths of an inch closer to the actual size and then cut the entire thing in one pass at the full thickness. And that eliminates all of those little drop-in marks, those witness marks where the bit is plunging. Another thing that will eliminate them completely is ramping. I ramp at a minimum. I ramp my bits at least double their cutting diameter. I tend to go more than that. Generally speaking, with a quarter inch bit, I ramp in over a distance of one inch. And what that'll do is that'll ease the bit into the wood so you don't get that plunge witness mark. Because that plunge, even though the bits are pretty robust, there is still a slight amount of deflection, depending upon how much of the bit you have sticking out of the collet. So by ramping it in, it's less of an impact and more of a slice. So ramping combined with a separate last pass, you will have the cleanest outside profiles and, and the best chance of getting a nice clean outside profile. Other than that, I use down cut bit so I don't chip up the top surface and that's it. Those are my secrets basically. And they're not secrets. I picked them up from watching other folks and just experiment. So, Dave Matthews said software can usually be expensive. Oh, yes, sir, it can. Um, Price Master Cam. And you'll see what's going on there. Um, let's see. Sim Pilot, I'm sorry I did not buy Aspire right off the bat. Well, you don't have to have any buyer's remorse, at least with Vectric, because one of the things I love about their products is if you, like me, I bought VCarve Pro and I use my income tax refund to buy VCarve Pro, you know. Um, I bought that and then years later, I upgraded to Aspire. Well, you only pay the difference in price. They give you credit for what you have already purchased. So you're not buying one for $700, then coming back four years later and buying another one for $2,000. You just pay the difference in price. And that's a good thing, believe me. It's pretty cool. Let's see. Simi and others says, please, do you have experience generating G-code for drill blocks in industrial CNC router? No, I do not. I've never been close to an industrial CNC router. I, I, I don't know a thing about them. I would like to go to a few shops and check a few out. I'd love to see a uh, five axis machine in, in motion. I'd love to see... Uh, you know, a CNC lathe in action. But I've just, I don't know anybody who has access to that kind of equipment who can invite me to go check it out. So, but what can I say? Uh, let's see. Um, Todd H. C. N. C. says a lead-in and a lead-out works too. Yes, a lead-in can help a great deal. It just depends on the on the project, I guess, I never really used leads that much, but I can see in certain areas where it would be a major benefit to do so. So, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Simpilot says, I use the bullnose bits for the rough cut now rather than the flat. You know, whatever works for you. I mean, and that's why that's why I kind of sound like I'm hedging my bets here because it's um, there is no, well, I won't say there aren't any written in stone rules. There are some written in stone rules like thou shalt not drill with a down cut end mill. Um, but other than that, Whatever works for you. I mean, if you get a better finish with a ball nose rather than a flat 
end mill, then by all means, use it. I mean, it's your tool, it's your machine, and you need the result you need to get. And if that works for you, I mean, by all means, go for it. Uh, let's see. Jacques Petit Victoire says, you've probably seen that some users say don't use end mills for drilling. Um, that's true. However, do know that the drill bits that you go down and buy at Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, whatever, were not designed for the RPMs of a router or spindle. So you're kind of taking your life in your old hand, own hands. Having said that, I don't know why they say don't drill holes with an end mill. Now, let me preface this. Let me preface this by saying I'm talking about machining wood on a CNC router. I know nothing about machining metal. I've never done it. So the spindles and speeds used for metal are completely different. And I know the spindles on a mill are way, way, way slower. So that's not a concern for you. But if you're drilling a hole in wood, end mill's the way to go. Do not attempt to use a drill bit in a router. It's, it, you're, you, you are an accident that has found a place to happen. You're just looking for a convenient time. So, uh, let's see. Uh, looks like some good advice going back and forth there. Uh, Jeff at Woody Wan says, any shop signs in your area? Um, <laughs> yeah, there are a few. There are a few shop sign or sign shops in the area, but I haven't really established a very good relationship with them yet. I mean, I've gone to them looking to buy materials. I'm in a very small town. And they have a, I guess, a philosophical problem with supplying someone they see as their competition. So I, I, I just have to develop a better, uh, a better rap um, rapport with them. Uh, you know, you, we don't have uh, the closest place I can go get uh, like color core or sign foam or anything like that is 270 miles to the north of me in Portland or 270 miles to the south of me in Sacramento. I got no place closer. So um, it's one of those situations. Uh, I, I, let me establish a better relationship with these folks. Then I can, you know, maybe go. Let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. Karen wants to know, you just made me remember something that I was supposed to ask. The router has a speed dial. Okay. It's a very variable, variable speed router. Do we adjust our speeds via the dial or does the computer take care of all of that? No, you have to adjust the speeds manually. And that again is a set it and forget it. Uh, I don't know which machine you have or which router you have, but, um, Look for a Facebook group dedicated to that machine. If it's like a Bob CNC, Bob's Evo 4, or um, a Shapeoko, or Onefinity, whichever it is, look for a uh, Facebook group or a support forum dedicated to that machine. Those people know your machine best and they can help guide you as to what those settings should be or what their experience has told them is the best settings for your application. But you do need to manually adjust that speed yourself. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Jacques Petit Victoire wants to know, do I ever use Aura Mask? I'm going to be using it for the first time on a future project. Um, just, it's um, coming in the future. <laughs> so, uh, Karen, another good, uh, another resource. 
go to your machine manufacturer's website and look under support. And usually that's a menu. It's not just an automatic tech support page. Look for support forum or support community. And by all means, join. If it's a separate forum that's not a part of social media, uh, by all means, join. Um, those support forums and those support communities are made up of, generally speaking, users like you and me who own the machines, like the machines, and are there to to uh, answer questions and swap tips and tricks and ideas and share files sometimes or just give advice. But if you're having a problem with, let's say for the sake of argument, you're having a problem with a Shapeoko machine, go to the Shapeoko website, look, at the, look for the Shapeoko su support forum and join. There may be a few company employees that are members but overwhelmingly, the membership is made up of regular folks like you and me who don't work for Shapeoko or don't work for Onefinity or Bob's or whoever. They're just normal mopes like you who have you and me who have gone through and done the same things. And chances are you are not the first person to have that question. So, all right. Now, I'm not talking about sending them an email. I'm talking about join the forum and post on the forum and ask the questions there. Um, getting back to the Oramask question, I've never used it, but one thing I have seen that's in common is it needs to be a smooth, clean uh, surface. So the consensus is to finish, to pre-finish with at least some uh, urethane or shellac and stick the uh, aura mask down to that, not to the bare wood. So, uh, yeah, Norman Peterson is saying a coat of shellac before, before putting the aura mask down is a must. Yeah, I've seen that. I have not, uh, I've not experienced it yet. I'm getting ready to. So, all righty. Um, I hope I got to everybody's questions. Good grief, we've been on here for 45 minutes. I need to go ahead and wrap her up. Uh, I don't know what the next week's video is going to be. Oh, wait a minute. I do one real quick. Have uh, somebody earlier asked for a shop shed update. Um, it's nothing really big other than me prepping the shop shed for paint which uh, I'm going to, now I know I've got the lights sitting up here. They're just up there right now to cover the electrical boxes so it doesn't rain inside of them. I took these off to caulk around them, uh, the exterior plugs, but that's what I'm doing right now. I'm caulking in preparation for paint. I've got about a week of decent painting weather out there right now. As um, soon as I'm done with this, I'll get the links posted. Then I got to jump outside and finish caulking and start priming the bare wood that you see. Um, other than that, nothing really super exciting. Um, I'm in the process of running electrical as well. I just need to. Uh, I, I just need to get this done so I can run the electrical to these pieces here after I get them all painted. So. That is going to be just a standard white porch light. I know it's crooked in the picture. And this is going to be a red on the air light. So everybody over at the house knows when I'm in here doing a live Q&A or when I'm recording a video. So that's the name of that tune. This will only be on when the door is shut. And yes, I am going to put a catch out here to catch the door so it doesn't crush the light. So that's the only shop eight update I have for right now. Um, no, don't delete the file. I was trying to come out of screen share. <laughs> Only happens when I'm live. Okay, let's go ahead and end this uh, real quick. Sim, Sim Pilot. No, I have never used CarveCo. Uh, the only thing I've ever used has been VCar Pro and Aspire. Okay, I will go ahead and get these links up here. The uh, CNC for Absolute Beginners article on my um, on my website. I'll put a link to that down in the description, and uh, I'll put the CNC for Absolute Beginners 
link, uh, playlist link down in the description of this video as well. So until then, again, I'm not sure what next week's video is going to be, but we'll figure something out. So until then, uh, just get out in the shop and do something cool. Don't hang around indoors. I mean, let's, let's get going. Have a good one. Y'all take care. Ha, ha, ha.